Hello everyone, my name is Puneet. I'm part of Informatica Global Support Team. The topic of today's presentation is Transient Cluster and in this session we are going to cover complete on EMR Transient Cluster. These are the agendas of today's presentation uh, where we are going to see how to create a cloud platform connections and how to create a workflows uh, in order to uh, run any DI uh, workflows to create and delete the transient cluster and what are the cluster workflow components, what are the prerequisites the administrator task and the developer task uh, followed by a few InfoCMD commands can be used for the cloud provisioning connections and, and the demo on EMR transient cluster. So here you, know, you can use a workflow to create a cluster and run a mapping and then uh, you can uh, delete a cluster on the cloud platform clusters. So this can be used both on EMR uh, or the Azure HD inside but in the demo we are going to cover only on the EMR clusters. The main component is, is a create cluster task and this cluster task can be used to configure the information regarding the cluster uh, and the de details. And this is mainly used uh, to enable the communication between the data integration service and the cloud platform. So uh, during the cloud platform connections we have to create the cloud provisioning connections and the Hadoop connections. We are going to cover in detail how to create the cloud provisioning connections and the Hadoop connections uh, in the coming slides. And also there is a another task called delete cluster task and this task is a final task in the workflow uh, which will be you know, terminating the clusters once the workflow got completed. The main intention of having this delete cluster task uh, to you know, uh, delete the clusters immediately once the mapping got completed and this saves the cost. As I told this cluster workflow uh, will be work both on you know, Amazon EMR or the Azure HD Insight as well as uh, the Databricks cloud platforms. <coughs> Before uh, starting the job, uh, these are the prerequisites which you should know. Like, you know, uh, uh, in order to create a cloud provisioning connection, you should have the <coughs> AWS access key, the AWS secret key, and the regions uh, where uh, you are going to create a cluster. And uh, as a domain prerequisites, uh, verify that you have installed the Informatica DI domain. Uh, if the domain is on AWS, that is well and good. If, it, if the domain is on on-premises, make sure that you have enabled a VPN uh, between the on-premises uh, Informatica DI domain uh, to the AWS account. You must have a permission to create a connection to the domain and also uh, to create a cluster on AWS, the AWS administrator must open a required ports and the security groups. As a cloud platform prerequisites, make sure uh, you have a create user account with administrator privileges and as I told uh, on AWS create a virtual private cloud uh, and also enable a VPN uh, between the Informatica DI which is on on-premises and the AWS clusters. Also if the Informatica domain is installed on on-premises make sure to enable the DNS uh, resolutions. Uh, now this is how uh, the create cluster tasks uh, you know will be used so this is mainly as I told it is mainly used uh, to create a cluster related information so where you know what would be the cluster name versions and what course how, what, how many data nodes all these things can be specified under the create cluster task uh, followed by you have to sp give the cloud provisioning connections in order to create a cluster on the fly that is called the transient or ephemeral cluster so the cloud provisioning connection is it is similar to the the CCO connection what we used to create it in the earlier uh, DI products. So this in this connections uh, we will be giving all the AWS uh, required details the mandatory details like you know the access key the secret key and the rules and submits and all. We'll show all these things on the demo side. Once the uh, cloud provisioning connection is created, uh, we can associate the same cloud provisioning connection in order to create a Hadoop uh, connection. Uh, so these connections can be used uh, during the time of uh, 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 mapping deployed on the workflows <coughs> to run those mappings on the create cluster task. And as I told, uh, the delete cluster task is the final task uh, in the workflow. So this is mainly used to delete or terminate the cluster once all the mappings got completed. Uh, uh, if you want to delete the cluster manually then you can use InfoCMD command called delete cluster and these are the workflow process like you know you can see here that uh, from the administrator uh, task there is something called verify prerequisites first you have to verify the, all the prerequisites which Informatica has mentioned on the guide then you have to create a cloud provisioning connections and associated Hadoop connections this all the task has to be performed from the 
administrator task and from the developer side you have to create a create cluster task and then you have to associate the mappings and then uh, you it is optional you can add it or you can delete the uh, delete cluster task and then you have to deploy and run the workflow so this is what we explained so far uh, the prerequisites uh, which are needed for the administrator task and you know the developer task and uh, these are the info cmd command which i was talking about uh, the info cmd command uh, to uh, run on the cloud provisioning connections to delete any uh, cluster which got created by using a create workflow uh, you can use a command called delete cluster command or if you want to list the clusters then you can use a list cluster command now let's move on to the demo in the demo i'll show how to create a cloud provisioning connection how to create uh, how to associate the hadoop connection to the cloud provisioning connection then we'll can create a simple uh, you know we'll develop a simple workflow and we'll uh, we'll deploy and we'll show how to how it actually creates a cluster and deletes a cluster so this is my 1041 uh, di admin console here under the connections uh, you can click on the new new connections so under the cloud provisioning you can see a option called aws cloud provisioning azure and the databricks in our demo we are going to create a emr cloud provisioning connection or emr cluster so we are going to use this aws cloud provisioning connections let's select this and click on ok so here it will ask you to specify the aws access key and the aws secret key id so where uh, this id should have permission to create a cluster on the emr and then you have to specify the regions and the the emr role the ec2 instance profile all these things are mandatory fields which you have to fill it and the ec2 subnet so once you have specified these details you can click on finish so this uh, this will create a cloud provisioning connections uh, in my case as a demo i have already created a connection so i'll be using the same connections in order to you know show you as a dem uh, as a in the in the demo part so I've already created a connection as I told um, no I've already given those details and I've already created a connection so these are the connections which have uh, uh, used it let me show you that uh, CCP connections the cloud provisioning connections uh, uh, yeah so these are the connections which I have used it as I told uh, I have this uh, uh, access key I specify the access key and the secret key and the region details and the EMR role details and the EC2 instance and the subnet details so now once the cloud provisioning connection is created now you have to create a hadoop connection and you have to associate this cloud provisioning connection uh, to the respective hadoop connection to do that first you have to click on uh, the uh, you know click on new connections uh, in the cluster you have to select the hadoop click on ok uh, here you specify the name for the hadoop connections uh, followed by uh, then you have to select uh, you no need to select the cluster configuration in order to that you have to select the cloud provisioning configurations uh, so since we have already created the cloud provisioning connections you have to select this connection so now the Hadoop connection will be associated with this uh, you know respective uh, cloud provisioning connections so in my case I have already created a connection let me use that connection so uh, this is the connection which I have already created if you look at this this connection has associated with uh, the cloud provisioning connection which I have already created it by specifying all the AWS key, a secret key, the regions and the EMR role, the EC2 instance profiles and the subnet details. So now we have uh, the cloud versioning connection created and also we have created uh, the Hadoop uh, uh, you know, connections. So having these two, uh, we are good to uh, go and develop a workflow. Let's uh, now move on to the developer tool and we'll develop a map, uh, workflow. So we are in the developer tool. Let's go and create a new workflow. Uh, click on new, the workflow. Just specify it as like you know workflow demo. Once the workflow got created, uh, yeah, as I told, like you know there will be a components. So there is something called create cluster task and there is something called delete cluster task. So you can use this in order to create a transient uh, uh, EMR clusters. So un let me get connected start event to this create cluster task and I'm not having any mappings at present. I'll just showing a demo. Uh, if you have any mappings, uh, suppose, you know, if, if I have some mappings like this, 
uh, you can just associate this mapping in between the create and uh, delete list task and have to specify and have to connect this create list task to mapping task and from the mapping task to delete list task but make sure in the mapping you have selected uh, the connection as auto deploy so here under the runtime uh, when you select the Hadoop engine make sure the connection uh, should be of auto deploy and this is how actually you can uh, associate the mapping uh, you know you can run a mapping uh, on the create list task so uh, yeah as a create list task uh, there is advanced options in the advanced options uh, you can specify all the required details uh, like you know what is the cluster name what is the cluster version and uh, if you would like to store uh, the cluster logs then you can specify the s3 log locations or uh, s3 bucket locations and what is the maximum instance type or how many ec2 instance you want to have it or what is the size of uh, the elastic block size uh, by default it is 10 uh, you can set all these things uh, if you have any other you know uh, related uh, bootstrap actions like you know, if you want to pass anything to the hadoop clusters uh, you can pass it in the bootstrap actions uh, in a json format or uh, if you have if you want to create a cluster uh, which has SSL enabled or the KMS enabled then you can pass those details in the security configurations uh, if you want to run any other uh, services on the Hadoop clusters then you can use this application tab uh, if you want to create any Hadoop commands like you know once the cluster got created if you want to create some uh, uh, folders and if you want to give some permission to the respective uh, uh, users then you can use these steps or if you have any other uh, extra properties which has to be passed during the time of cluster creations then you can use this custom properties all these things are documented in informatica uh, documentation guide uh, which i'll be sharing it in the reference uh, uh, slide and the last uh, uh, slide of the demo uh, so now uh, uh, as a general uh, there is an option to select what type of uh, cluster we are going to create it so in my case uh, we are selecting emr cluster let's select as a amazon emr and the connection type as it as we already created a connections let's use that uh, uh, you know cloud provisioning connections uh, which is the associated Hadoop connections we are clicking on here okay so once it is done as I told uh, uh, like you know the delete cluster task will be directly associated with the create cluster task so once the cluster got created uh, one th then the delete cluster task will delete these clusters now let's connect this to mapping so this is how actually you can you know uh, create a workflow in order to create any transient Hadoop clusters so I have already created a cluster uh, the workflow uh, this is the workflow which I have already created uh, as I told I don't have any mapping in between uh, this is a create cluster task and the delete cluster task so let me deploy this workflow and uh, we'll see how it actually looks from the admin console side so I'm selecting the respective uh, DAS I'm just uh, you not know, deploying the workflow So once the cluster got, uh, no, the workflow got deployed uh, from the admin console uh, under the workflow, you can see that the first task is a create cluster task, which is started now. As I showed, uh, my workflow has a two tasks. One is create cluster task and the delete cluster task. So this is the first task uh, which is going to create a cluster. So now, uh, as you can see that it is, it is started creating a cluster. Let's download the log and we'll see what is happening. If you look at this cluster log, uh, it is trying to connecting to URL uh, uh, S3 and you know, uh, it is tried connecting to the AWS and successfully connected to the AWS. Now it is trying to create a EMR cluster and yeah, this is the cluster ID uh, which is trying to create it. Uh, it is in progress. Now the current state of the cluster is starting. So this takes around uh, uh, six minutes uh, to create a cluster. Let's wait. And then we'll again, you know, uh, take a clusters. Uh, again, we'll take a log and we'll see. Yeah, as you can see now, uh, you know, the create cluster uh, task got completed. Uh, now the second task was delete cluster task. So now it is started processing. Uh, let's download the create cluster uh, task logs, and we'll understand what all the things are uh, inside here. So as I told, it is tried connecting to the AWS and it is successfully connected to the AWS and then it is trying to create a EMR cluster and here uh, if you look at this, it has created a cluster ID uh, always the EMR cluster IDs will start with J-Iphone 
and once it is done now the current status was starting now after that uh, you could see that it is started running here it is the cluster id and uh, this is the version uh, because the same version which i was selected during the time of uh, create cluster task advanced options and now it is trying to create a cluster configuration object and here uh, you could see that it has created you know uh, the cluster configuration object and it is picking up the core site xmls and uh, the yarn xml and the htfs site xmls the map site xml and the high site xml and all these things are created now it will be using an object called cluster config object id and this is the object id and this object id will be associated with the hadoop connection this is the hadoop connections and this hadoop connections will be used uh, when you have any mappings in between the workflows uh, in, in between the create cluster task and the delete cluster task fine so now uh, we are good uh, let's go back uh, to the here uh, you can see that you know it is now deleting the cluster task uh, uh, we can refresh it uh, so now the delete cluster sh uh, task should delete the the uh, cluster which got created by using, using a create cluster task uh, let's download these logs and you can see here like you know uh, it is executing uh, that uh, init not initialized here this is the Hadoop connections now it is removing this Hadoop connections and so now it is trying to connect into the AWS and it is successfully connected now it is trying to terminate the the EMR cluster which got created few minutes back now the current status is under terminating yeah so the workflow got completed the delete cluster task also is completed let's download the latest log yeah, you can see here uh, no, uh, initially the status was terminating now it got terminated now uh, this cluster ID or uh, the cluster it got completely terminated and this successfully it is and it is called a deinitialized cluster completed so this is how actually you can make use of uh, the workflow uh, in order to create a transient uh, Hadoop clusters uh, it might be a EMR, HD Insight or the Databricks clusters <coughs> this clusters are no uh, this use the main use case uh, to run this kind of transient cluster to run any mappings which actually runs uh, weekly ones or you know monthly ones or daily ones uh, instead of keeping your uh, the persistent cluster uh, persistent cluster up and running uh, all over the time uh, you can create a, a this kind of transient clusters and you can run a mapping and you can delete the clusters uh, this for the demo So we would like to hear from you. Please write us to Informatica support and you can follow us on twitter.com slash infosupport. Thank you.